The three most important types of tax systems are proportional, regressive, and progressive tax systems. The main difference between them is how the tax rate changes in relation to the income of the taxpayer. Let's start with the proportional tax system. Proportional taxes require all taxpayers to pay the same fraction of their income regardless of how much money they earn. That means the tax rate doesn't change as the income increases or decreases. Therefore, this system is also commonly referred to as a flat tax. To illustrate this, meet John, Jake and Jane. John works as a construction worker and earns $50,000 a year. Meanwhile, Jake works as a private investigator and earns $100,000 a year. And finally, the highest earner of the group is Jane, who works as an astronaut and earns $200,000 a year. In a proportional tax system, our three friends are all taxed at the same rate, let's say 20% of their annual income. In that case, John has to pay $10,000 in taxes, whereas Jake's tax bill adds up to $20,000 and Jane has to pay $40,000. As you can see, in this system, the burden of the tax increases proportionally to the income of our three taxpayers, because the tax rate is fixed. Next up is the regressive tax system. Regressive taxes require high income earners to pay a smaller fraction of their income than those with a lower income. One of the most common examples of a regressive tax is a sales tax, which is a tax placed on the sale of a good or service. Because the amount of that tax is the same for all buyers, the fraction of income devoted to paying it decreases as the income of the taxpayer increases. To illustrate this, let's revisit our three friends once again. Now, assume they all bought a new car worth $50,000 with a sales tax of exactly 10%. That means they all have to pay $5,000 in additional taxes. Now, if we calculate the tax rate in relation to their income, we can see that John has to spend 10% of his annual income to pay the sales tax. Meanwhile, Jake has to devote 5% of his income, and Jane only spends 2.5% of her annual income to pay the exact same tax. So, relatively speaking, in this system, the burden of the tax decreases as the income of our three taxpayers grows. Finally, we have the progressive tax system. Progressive taxes require high-income taxpayers to pay a larger fraction of their income than taxpayers with a lower income. That means as the income grows, so does the tax rate. The idea behind this is that wealthy people spend relatively less on the basic necessities in life, so they can afford to pay more taxes and still maintain their standard of living. To see how that works, consider a progressive tax system with three tax brackets. People who earn up to $75,000 pay a 5% income tax. People who earn between $75,000 and $150,000 pay 10%. And people who make more than $150,000 pay a 20% income tax. That places John, Jake, and Jane in three different brackets. John only has to pay a 5% income tax, which adds up to $2,500 in his case. Meanwhile, Jake has to pay 10% of his income in taxes, which is equal to $10,000. And finally, Jane's income is taxed at 20%, which means she has to pay $40,000. Note that despite the higher tax rate, Jane still has more money after paying the tax than the other two, and Jake still has more than John. Therefore, the higher tax burden doesn't affect them as much because they can afford to pay more and still have enough money in the bank. So, let's sum it up once again. The three most important types of tax systems are proportional, regressive, and progressive tax systems. Proportional taxes require all taxpayers to pay the same fraction of their income, regardless of how much money they earn. Regressive taxes require high-income earners to pay a smaller fraction of their income than those with a lower income. And finally, progressive taxes require high-income taxpayers to pay a larger fraction of their income than taxpayers with a lower income.